Welcome back to part 6 of the 700cc two-stroke swapped Chinese buggy that I'm converting to 4x4. So what I'll be working on in this episode is getting the power to the diffs. I'm going to be mounting the secondary and just reinforcing the crap out of this buggy. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so I got my drive shaft mocked up. Uh, there's a U-joint there in the middle because that part needs to be straight, and then the rest of the drive shaft can just go wherever it wants to. So the drive shaft is going to be complicated because I don't really have a lathe. If I had a lathe, it would be pretty easy, but I just had my local machine shop machine this uh, keyed shaft down to accept this spline collar. It's just going to go on there like that and be welded. Um, the welding rod I'm using has a tensile strength of. 70,000 pounds, so it might break, it might not, I don't know. Alright, so I got the secondary clutch mounted up. Next up, what I'll have to do is put a bearing right here for a drive shaft to get it secure. And then we'll run a chain from this sprocket to a sprocket on the drive shaft. I will admit the belt is going to be annoying to service because we're going to have to undo these six bolts and pull the jack shaft out. Some of you might be wondering how are you going to tension the chain. Well, I'm just going to run an idler sprocket on top right here where it's um, not under stress and just have a bunch of bolt holes where I can slide it up and down. I'm gonna beef up this bearing a little bit and probably add a second bearing, but so far it seems like it's not binding. Um, I mean, the shaft doesn't have to be perfectly straight because the splines are curved. So there's room for a little bit of play. All right guys, so there goes the drive shaft, and as you can see, it is really close to this passenger seat. But what I'll do is just go ahead and bend some sheet metal out and make a box to enclose the drive shaft. So this is one and a quarter 065 chromoly, and then this is one and a quarter solid. So that's what someone in the comments told me, suggested I do. It's a little bit on the weaker side. You know it's better to have a weaker link um, in case something locks up, you know.
Alright, so before we weld in the tunnel, I'm gonna go ahead and weld my drive shaft. So I'm using some heavy duty farm equipment U joint. Um, supposedly it's forged. And it's scary how light this drive shaft is. I mean, it's this is 16 gauge uh, chrome molly tubing. So hopefully it doesn't twist. So the drive shaft meshes perfectly. Alright, so that is the drive shaft tunnel. It's a little bit wobbly, but uh, we'll fix that. Alright, we got the drive shaft tunnel welded and man, it kind of looks factory. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, but we're gonna need to close this in as well. But I'm gonna have to make it removable. Well, I want to so that I can uh, access this U joint. Guys, this is a lot of work for a Chinese buggy. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Alright, so what I'm working on is I'm making some more chassis stiffness. I'm gonna make an X like that. Also, it'll be a good place where I can mount my heat shields and scatter shields too. So you'll see I'm gonna start jumping around on uh, different things uh, just because I wanna get this thing done. So the reason why the drive shaft is kind of offset in the tunnel is just to give me as much uh, room as possible for the seats. Alright, so I've marked the ends of the shaft and I'm going to grind this out and put uh, snap rings on the shaft to keep it from uh, sliding back and forth. Alright, so I covered that. I got the jack shaft welded and secured. So here's what I'm thinking for the chain tensioner. I just have a piece of square tubing. I'm going to drill a bunch of holes in it and have the sprocket uh, move up and down. And as you can see, it works. just need a um, I kind of messed up this tube, so I'm going to make a new one. Alright, so I got this single pipe. We're going to mount this. It, it's not even going to fit in here. So the pipe kind of just sits like that, which is, it just looks kind of too ugly. So hopefully I can kind of twist it and bring it down lower and then I'm going to mount the radiator.
so the original idea was to mount the radiator up here. Um, it looks best right here, and it's out of the way of everything. But I'm just thinking for the water pump, is it even going to be able to pump that much water that high up? So maybe I'll mount it lower right here. It doesn't look that good right here, but it'll be functional, I guess. And then there's also the gas tank. We could also mount the gas tank right here, which that would look clean, but I'm not, I don't know. All right, I guess moment of truth. Let's see if this thing actually runs.